My name is Frank Gregory. I'm, uh, I'm the one who actually created the Cam Wood Bat. And I'm a professional hitting instructor. Been uh, teaching hitting for anything from the major league players all the way down to youth players. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a hitting DVD uh, called Coach's Guide to Hitting. The reason why it's called Coach's Guide to Hitting is it teaches a coach or a, a father how to teach hitting. And I've done these things in the past. I've done them with college players. I've done them with major league players. And this time is kind of neat because I'm gonna do it with one of my former players who I trained. I picked him up when he was a senior, his, uh, after a senior year in high school. He had only hit 180 a senior year, and three years later, he became a Division I All-American by simply following this program. And where I learned hitting from, I was real fortunate as a 15, 16-year-old kid, I learned hitting from Rod Crew. I was able to hang out with the, the uh, it was at that time, the California Angels when they used to spring train in Palm Springs. I got to hang out with them for a couple of years. Uh, in spring training. That was back when they had guys like Reggie Jackson and, and uh, Fred Lynn and, and some of the best players in the game. But they also had a guy named Rock Crew who had just came off of winning seven batting titles. And I always tell people that, that uh, the very first time I saw hitting was when I saw Rock Crew. I was standing in the back of the cages and you could watch Reggie Jackson hit, you could watch Fred Lynn hit, and all of a sudden Crew got in there and it was just different. I used to tell me, I don't know what, they, what it is, but I like it. And what I started understanding was, is, is how a bat needs to stay on plane or on line with the pitch. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is what a hitting zone is. And a lot of people confuse this, and I'm amazed at probably even 90% of college coaches don't really understand what a hitting zone is. They confuse it with a strike zone or whatever. A hitting zone is quite simple. It is an area in which we can keep the sweet spot of the bat on line with the pitch. So a lot of players are taught, and, and uh, I was fortunate to do a lot of work with Tony Gwynn. Matter of fact, Tony used our bats out of San Diego State, and we'll, we'll show you some videos of him talking about the same subject here. But a lot of players are taught to throw the barrel at the ball or to pull a ball. And what I have set up here is, is kind of a representation of what a hitting zone is with these three balls lined up. So if a player gets up there and he throws the barrel at the ball, let's say we're trying to hit this ball right here as the pitch comes in. If we throw the barrel at the ball, we will make contact here, but if we're a little late, we get jammed. If we're a little early, now we're gonna catch the ball off the end of the bat. A lot of people are taught to pull a ball. Now think about what that term means, pull. In order to pull a baseball, the sweet spot must go outside the line that the pitch is coming in and pull a, back across in order to take the ball to left field. And if you do that, again, if you pull, the barrel is out here. If we're late, we're gonna get jammed. The only time we're gonna make contact would be right here, which means that a hitter that either throws the barrel at the ball, tries to pull the, uh, pull the ball by taking the barrel outside the zone is gonna have a hitting zone of only three or four inches. Okay, now the proper way to hit, and this is the reason why a lot of people use this bat. Tony Gwynn used it out there at San Diego State. We have uh, Manny Ramirez used it. Uh, even Mo Vaughn uses it to teach his kids. Andy Barquette, who's a, uh, the hitting coach for the Boston Red Sox. He uses it for not only his players, but his, his son uses it. And by putting the weight here, it teaches a player to drive the hands of the ball. A lot of people here take the knob to the ball. And here's the reason for that. If we take the knob to the ball, and we have to learn to relax our hands. So if I drive my hands to the ball, the barrel now will get on line with the pitch. It stays on line the entire time. So a good hitter can create about an 18 inch hitting zone. Then that barrel is gonna stay on line. So now if my timing is off, I'm still going to make solid contact the entire way. Now to put it in perspective, a ball that's coming in 90 miles an hour and a bat that's going back at 90 miles an hour, 
you only have four thousandths of a second for those two objects to intersect each other. Which means that anything that you do to take the barrel outside the zone, or under the zone, or around the zone, is going to limit your opportunity to hit. And we've all talked about and heard hitting is about timing. But hitting is actually about what we do when our timing is off. Anybody can hit when their timing is perfect. But nine times out of ten, a hitter's timing is just off. How many times are we making solid contact then? Are we getting jammed? So if we really learn how to relax our hands, drive the hands to the ball, and let the barrel follow on a line. Don't force it and allow the barrel to go outside a line. Stay inside the baseball. That's what we talked about. Staying inside the baseball. If the barrel's inside the baseball, we can't get jammed. Once the barrel gets out here, that's when we're vulnerable. Now, the next part that we need to talk about, about the hitting zone, is before we talked about going around the hitting zone, now we gotta understand that we gotta stay on line where we don't go under the hitting zone. Now, uh, every single time a player swings and misses on a fastball, percentage-wise it's probably in the high 90s, a player swings under the fastball. And the reason being is because they're trying to create lift. So they're creating what we call a loop in the zone. So normally on a fastball, their timing is good, but because they've created a loop in the zone, they're going to come underneath that ball. So start paying attention to that. When you're watching games, uh, major league games, or you're watching your kid play, watch how many times when he misses the fastball, it's always, always under it. Now on your off-speed pitches, your change-ups, your curveballs, it's always over it. And the reason being is because they've created a loop in their swing. They're, again, they're trying to create loft. So when they come up, they're, they're fooled on an off-speed pitch. Curveball changeup. The bat is now lifting up out of the zone as the pitch is now coming down under the, under the bat. So a player, again, needs to learn how to relax his hands and take the hands to the ball. If you just relax them, take the hands, the barrel will automatically get on line with the pitch. If you notice, these balls are get a little lower. The ball is coming slightly downhill. When people talk about being level, to uh, a level swing, what we're talking about is level to the pitch coming in. The pitch is coming in somewhere around six, seven degrees on a down, uh, downward slope. So if I try to, to, to force the barrel to get in there, I'm gonna create that loop and zone that uh, loop under the zone and up if i learn to just relax and drive my hands look what happens to the bat when i just take my hands to the ball the bat automatically just matches the line that the, 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 the that pitch is coming in now as i continue my swing the bat will stay on line with that pitch so what what happens is even if a player is, is trying to create upward lift and does make contact, he's not creating any backspin. You've got to stay down and through the ball, just like a golfer does, to create that backspin. We're not driving down on the ball, okay? That's where people get confused. Okay, just because we're driving our hands down on the ball doesn't mean the bat's going down on the ball. We're not throwing the barrel down on it. We're driving the hands down. Now the barrel will automatically go back up into the zone. So the key is don't force the barrel to do it. Learn how to do it naturally by taking your hands and let the barrel naturally go back up and through. Okay. I'm with uh, San Diego State coach, Hall of Famer, uh, Tony Gwynn. And uh, I want to first thank you for uh, give me your time here today. No, no problem. Thank you. And uh, as a hitting instructor, one of the easiest things for me to do is teach the uh, the mechanics of hitting. Right. That's the easy part. The hardest part is what I think made you one of the greatest hitters in the game. Thank you. Was the approach to hitting. Yeah. And I'm going to step away, and I want you to explain what you need to do when you step into that box, and and where your mindset needs to be. Okay. Well, it was really, it took a little while to kind of figure it out, but I, I, I think early on in my career, I kind of established, okay, what type of hitter I am, what am I trying to do when I get up to the plate, 
And what I learned was I'm a contact hitter. I'm not a guy who's going to hit the ball out of the ballpark. And so my goal is to go to the plate and put the bat on the ball, pure and simple. No, you know, I had no preconceived notions of where I wanted to hit it. I just knew that for me, what I did best was hit the ball the other way. And to me, that's the hardest part when it comes to hitting is being able to stand here and let the ball travel and let it get deep. Because, boom, well, right there, that's, that's really where I made a living, right there, fastball away. And so I knew if I could handle this ball right here, this ball right here was going to be easier to get to. And it's all about hand position. And notice the hands, how when you go from away to in the middle to out in front, that the palm on the top hand is up. It's not going over. Because if it starts to go over, now I'm going to make a whole lot of outs. And I'm not going to be able to hit the ball as hard. And so I understood that if I got into a good position and I took my hands on the right path, throughout my swing that I was going to have a chance for success. And that, in a game of baseball, is one of those little battles that you have to try to win, okay? We can't be so locked up on the result. We have to be, we really have to focus on the process. And the process is, if I could go to the plate and do things right every time, my chances of success go way up. So for me, it was understanding that I needed to control this ball out here first, if I could control this ball, this ball in the middle and this ball in the inside would be easier to hit. And that's that's who I was. That's what I tried to do. I tried to hit the ball. I tried to let it get deep as much as I could. Every now and then, you're going to take a shot. You're going to look for a ball in the middle of the plate. You're going to look for a ball in. But if I didn't get it where I was looking for, I would take it and work the camp, try to work the camp to get to where I thought I knew where I, what I was going to get. But ultimately, I wasn't a guest hitter. I didn't really anticipate a whole lot. I just kind of trusted my eyes and trusted if I got my hands in the right position that I was gonna that I could hit it. And ultimately, I learned that if I could handle the ball away, I could handle the other two zones a whole lot easier. And so I really focused on trying to trying to command the fastball or trying to command the outer third of the plate because if I could control that, I can control the other two thirds. And it really got to the point where I could go up to the plate and not really look for anything other than something out over the plate and still be able to handle balls middle and in. Think about this. Too many guys get up there and the first thing they think about is on their approach is they look for an inside pitch in order to pull. Okay. So if I get up here and I look for a fastball right here in order to pull this way, so I'm looking 90 miles an hour right here. So what happens is mentally and physically, I gotta get out there in order to not get beat and take the ball that way. So remember when we talked about, you know, we only got 0.4 seconds, the ball gets here, 0.2 seconds is understanding where the pitch is, pitch recognition and where it's gonna end up at. So if I look for 90 here to go this way, what happens is I'm trying to get out so far out front. By the time I recognize where the pitch is, I'm right about here in my swing. This is where I really understand what it is and where it's going to be. Well, look where my weight is. My weight is going towards the, the shortstop. Now, if I get 90 right here, I will probably do okay with that. But if they throw me 90 here, I have already committed to go in here. All my weight is here. Now, the only thing, and I'm sure a lot of you, you, you've done this and a lot of players you've seen do this, is now all their weight's this way. Now all I can do is throw their hands at it and hit the ball that way. Now, if I'm looking for 90 here and they throw me 75, where are they gonna throw me 75? Down. Curve ball. They're gonna throw that down and away, aren't they? Yeah. Well, I'm committed here, I'm already out here. There's no way in the world I can get, I can make any kind of contact on something slow here. So I'm done. Okay. The greatest hitters in the game, and, and if you look on, on my website and everything, you, I've actually I've done work with Tony Gwynn and all those, and Tony did a, a piece for me. They all handle the out half, outer half first and let the inside take care of itself. And what I mean by that, if I get up here and I look 90 away, okay, so now I'm up here and I'm looking away 90 and to take the ball hard to over the second baseman's head. Now, by the time I recognize where the pitch is, 
I've committed to here. Well, look where my weight is now. Everything's going this way, right? So my knee and hip, wherever my knee and hip goes, is where I want my hands to go. Now, just like we were talking about throwing, I can throw the ball just as hard that way as I can this way. I can hit the ball just as hard this way as I can that way. So now I can take that, go here, take everything this direction and hit it hard that way. If it's an off-speed pitch, it's going to be here. Okay. Well, everything's here to hit it. It's not that direction. Now you say, what if it's a fastball inside? That's real simple. All I do now is continue to take my knee and hip this way. Now, if you notice, on this inside pitch, everything's outside the ball. That's where rotation is important, get good rotation. So now if I get good rotation in here, look what happened. I now just got inside the ball. Everything's inside it now. So now I can take, and this will stay on line with that pitch. If I don't get good rotation, I get here, now I try to hit this ball, I can't pull back inside it. Now the barrel's gotta fly out around the zone. That's where I'm gonna get jammed. Now, if I get good rotation and I catch it, remember when we said we never pull the ball, okay? That does not mean I can't take the ball this way. If I, if I recognize it early enough, I will catch it out front, I will get good rotation, I come in here and I drive, now my barrel's staying on line with the pitch, and I catch it right there and take the ball into the alley with backspin instead of throwing around it. Now, if I recognize it a little late and get beat, which happens, let's say the ball gets deeper on me on the inner half. It doesn't mean I still can't hit it hard. I'm not gonna take it out of the ballpark, but now if I, as long as I get good rotation and get in here, I can drive that ball hard back up the middle or what we call an industry, Derek Jeter in it, where we drive that ball hard to right field. He was great at that. A lot of people ask a lot of times, uh, where did Tony Gwynn come in into our, our bats? And uh, this is how the story uh, happened, was he was the head coach. A lot of people don't really uh, realize this or know this, but he was the head coach. He played at San Diego State, went on to uh, play obviously 19 years with the Padres. Another thing a lot of people don't know is he actually was drafted by the uh, San Diego Clippers as a basketball player. He went to San Diego State to play basketball and that's when he found himself as a baseball player and really under started understanding hitting. And anyways, his team, the Aztecs, was playing uh, in Arkansas against the Razorbacks and of course they use our bats and he saw our bats out there and loved it and called me up and I'll never forget the time he said Frank somebody finally got this stuff right but he used a little different language on that I thought it was pretty funny and so I started talking to him about drills and different things that we can do there were they were really struggling they were hitting 223 midway through the season with only three home runs so he had me go out there with some bats worked on some drills. The very first day, went out there on a Monday, worked with them on a Monday and a Tuesday. That Tuesday night, they played against Long Beach State. They pounded out, I wanna say somewhere around 16, 17 hits. All of them were back up the middle or the other way except two. They went on and hit, hit almost 300 as a team for the rest of the year and they actually tripled their home runs. So Tony, Tony used our bats and our tees religiously. As a matter of fact, he got it for his son who plays in the big leagues and, and a lot of other players. He recommended our bats to USC started using it. The, the, one of their coaches at San Diego State that used to be there is now at uh, St. Mary's University, which is in Northern California, which is in the same conference. Uh, first thing he did when he got there was call me up and got some more bats and tees for, for their program. So it is a bat. Now, Tony did not use the bat when he played because the bat wasn't developed at that point. But he used it in order to teach his players how to get better, how to get his, their hands to the ball correctly. And he had a lot of success with it. First thing we're gonna talk about is grip. Um, I tell you, probably 7% of the hitters out there, if not more, don't even grip a bat properly. And uh, it's funny, if you go to a golf instructor, first thing they teach you is the grip. 
but you go to a college and half the kids aren't even gripping the ball correctly. So one of the th first things I want to do is I want Wes to explain the proper grip that you have to have to be a good hitter. Uh, for me, the proper grip, it has to be in your fingers. I see a lot of kids nowadays are shoving it to the back of their thumbs and grabbing it like that. Yes, that is a power position, but it's not going to be able to control the bat and the barrel the way we want to control it. When it's in the fingers, I like the, uh, the knuckles lined up. They, you know, they don't have to be perfectly straight. They can be a little off depending on your strength level and, you know, how well you can control the barrel. But I think it has to be in the fingers. It has to be here, roll the fingers over, and then the, the hand just lays on the back, on the, uh, the knob. So in the fingers, line the knuckles. That puts you in a position when the barrel comes through the zone, you're going to be palm up, palm down. If you're here, it's very hard to be palm up, palm down, and control the barrel. So I think it needs to be in the fingertips. That's going to control the barrel all the way through the swing. Exactly. And the other thing is we want to hold the bat loose. Is that correct? You want to hold the bat loose. It does not, the grip will not tighten until the point of contact or until the point when you pull the trigger to the baseball. Everything is held loose until everything is going toward the baseball. And naturally, your grip will tighten down when you swing a bat because it has to where you're going to drop the barrel. Exactly. It will, it will happen automatically. So hold it loose, take the hands to the ball, and then it will tighten up automatically. The next thing we want to go over is stance. And I understand there's a lot of different stances out there. There's open stances, there's closed stances. Uh, what I want to do is let Wes explain uh, a stance and his stance, and then, then I'll, I'll go from there. Stance to me is going to vary in the size of the player, the athleticism of the player. I like to just get a little more shoulder width with a little flexion in my legs. I, you know, you can't have your legs locked out. You know, you don't want to be too down. I mean, you see on TV these different guys in major leagues have so many different stances. They have mastered the swing. They have mastered seeing pitches and judging pitches. And until you do that, I think you need to be square to the plate. And I think you need to just be in a comfortable athletic position, maybe a little wider, a little here, I mean, a little closer. But you've got to have flexion in your knees. For me, it was a little shoulder width, flexion in my knees, and my hands were just just past your level, your height, just off my uh, shoulder. I mean, I was, this is all I did to get ready to go into my load. And i, I got to tell you, that is the perfect stance to start any player off and even continue your career with that. Um, a lot of a lot of guys uh, go into that open stance and show what an open stance. But an open stance, the pitcher is here. Right, this is all closed. Go ahead, stand right here. There you go. So this is closed. Open stance is going to be in here. And what happens is when they load their hands, they bring their foot in. But a lot of young players, especially, and a lot of players that have not had the experience in the bats first thing they're going to do is come in and close themselves off. And what's the first thing you have to do to do that? You can't go this way. You have to come this way to get the barrel to the baseball. And, you know, these guys you see on TV with an open stance, they understand. They get here and they're still square like they would have been if they started there. So unless you are advanced or have mastered your swing and your body control, you need to be square. I, I can't agree more with that. Now I'm going to bring in, uh, this is Trey Sykes, he's the student I was telling you about that I started uh, working with, and he is living proof of what a player can do if he really follows the program, sticks with it every day, and it's also proof that you, you don't have to either hit for average or for power, you can do both. Trey is a six foot four first baseman, played division one baseball, everybody thinks power hitter, but he also hit over 360 in, in, in college. So if you do things correctly, you can keep the bat online, you can have a high average, and still hit the ball out of the ballpark. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna introduce our drills to you. And what we do is we do what's called isolation drills. We break it down to one thing at a time so you can feel what your body's doing, understand what it's doing, do it correctly. We're gonna uh, show you how the drills are done, done correctly, the purpose of the drills. And then we move on to another drill and every time we move on another drill, what we'll do is we'll do a, um, show you how to marry that last drill into your new drill. 
so by the end of the program you have your full swing so first thing we always teach is how to take the hands to the ball there's two elements in hitting you have your lower half and you have your upper half so from the waist up the only thing the body does is take the hands to the ball it doesn't rotate up here that's that's I'm sure you've heard of, of your, your shoulder flying open it doesn't travel the only thing we do is take the hands to the ball for example in this swing right here you'll see the only thing I'm doing is taking my lower half then I take my hands my upper half never moved if my shoulder moves two inches my barrel moves two inches that's why we have to learn to take our hands to the ball I would say violently as quickly as we can but everything else has to stay still so what we're gonna do is we're gonna work with the lead lead hand Trey's gonna uh, do the drill we always work lead hand we learn how to do it correctly and then we come in and add the top hand to the drill so in this drill what we want to do go ahead and get your stance Trey is we want to get just like we get in a regular stance we're going to the hand above our shoulder or shoulder height or, or in that area we want to be able to take our hand directly down on the ball now again we're not driving the barrel down on the ball the key here is for Trey to stay keep his hand relaxed and loose so as he drives the hand down on the ball the barrel will, will not fly around the zone or down on the ball the barrel will automatically drop into that that zone we talked about online and back up on the ball now we're going to show this from two angles this angle and then from behind so if you're teaching this drill what you want to do go get your stance is primarily we want him to just follow that line to here we should also be finishing right in this area here we don't finish up out of the zone if we finish high a lot of people mistake this they think that uh, what does it matter what happens after we make contact okay well it means a lot because wherever you finish tells a story how you get there so if you're finishing up here you now come under the ball and up so we want to finish we, we call it to and through we go to the ball and continue through on that line so let's try it the other thing I like to do is I'll, I'll put four seams I put four seams towards the opposite field towards the second baseman so that player can think about driving the ball hard towards the second baseman okay so let's try just fo focus on his hand pal very good do another one now see how quiet his body is no movement to his body his head's not moving his shoulders not moving all he's doing is taking the hands to the ball we're gonna do a couple more here notice where he's finishing relax now if he's driving his hand down barrels automatically getting in the zone for you the ball's not going on the ground the ball's going in a projection to get get into the the, the alleys or out of the ballpark we want to hit the ball in the air but we want to do it with authority one more very good now we're going to do the same drill but i want you to, to see it from behind just like i would as a coach and look at what we're going to focus on so get your stance try so what we want to do is focus on the knob if this if this hand leaves his body just one or two inches what happens now is the barrel is now going to fly out around the zone whatever his hand does the barrel will follow and do so when, when we talk to hitters we don't focus on anything above the hand whatever hand does barrel does so for a quick example if I'm holding this bat up like this if I move my hand just two inches I just move the barrel six so that's where our focus needs to be whatever the hand does the barrel will do so in this drill we want to make sure that that basically there's a wall here just slow motion he just drives the knob, continue to the hand, let the barrel follow 
and finish here. If he finishes behind him in this drill, there, there's two reasons why he would do that. One, the shoulder flew open, or two, he threw the barrel, which caused the bat to come around. These one-handed bats weigh about 30 ounces. Now, it sounds heavy, but it really isn't because all the weight's right down here by the hand, but there's a purpose for that, to teach the player to dry that hand with the weight. So if he throws out, he's gonna finish back there. He should be looking uh, at the pitcher, just like looking right down the gun, right at the pitcher when he's done. Okay, let's try it for you. Good. He came up out of the zone just a little bit. Stay down and through. Much better. Watch the knob straight line to the ball. Without moving any of his body, he can actually hit the ball almost as hard as he can using his entire body. Sit over here for a second. People don't understand this, but you can take a, this is a 45 ounce bat. Weight means nothing. If you drive your hand, let the bat work, uh, weight doesn't matter on a bat. If you just take it, drive through, let the barrel go. This is a 45 ounce bat. And I can swing it with nothing, because really I'm not swinging the bat. I'm pulling and letting it go. If I swing this bat, it'll take my arm off. After you've accomplished the one-hand drill, what we do is we move into the two-hand drill. This is the exact same drill. We call this, this drill no feet, no shoulders, quite simply because we don't move our feet nor our shoulders. And what we're gonna do now is we're going to add the top hand. Now this is so important, nothing has changed in this drill. We went from going from two hands, I mean from one hand, to adding the top hand. That's all we've done, we're driving this, now we're gonna take them both. The only thing we're gonna do that's different than our normal swing is we're gonna work with our top hand open. Okay, this is what Tony Gwynn actually told me he thought was brilliant, because what it does is it teaches the player to drive both hands to the ball, he's got to be able to control the barrel next to his body, and he can't throw the barrel out around the ball. So all he's going to do is drive both hands to the ball, the hand's going to come off the bat, and he's going to finish right here. He's still going to finish just like he did with the one hand. This hand should be more towards the second base move. As we're using this hand, we're going to, we're going to pull with the lower one with it. We're just not going to throw with it. Okay, so let's try it. Same thing, the exact same thing we're looking for in this drill is what we were doing the, in the one hand drill. Make sure he stays on line with the pitch. Okay, all right, let's try it. Okay, he came around just a little bit. That's why he finished back behind him. Stay inside. A little better. Keep your hands nice and relaxed. And one thing I always talk about is we think of speed and not power, okay? If a player focuses on power, that's when he starts muscling up and forcing the barrel to the ball, which takes the barrel around the zone. We wanna work speed. And in order to be fast, we have to be loose, just like a pitcher has to be loose. A runner has to be loose. When they tighten up, the speed goes away and the mechanics go away, all right? Let's try one more. Okay. That time he lifted up out of the zone a little bit. That's why we kind of hit more of a fly ball. Let's do one more and let's stay down and through. Remember, we're going to and through it. Okay, now what happened on that one? Came around it. All right, that's where, that's right there. And, and I'm kind of glad he did that. That's a good example about what happened. Now, now ha what, why'd you come around it? What happened? My knob came out instead of okay. staying inside. Instead of staying inside, knob came out. And then what happened was he forced the barrel. So the top hand took over. That, that's what we call top hand dominant. Top hand took over and came around the ball. Like I say, he, he doesn't like making mistakes, but I'm glad he, did, he does every once in a while so we can see what the issue is. Now, let's do one more. This time he'll stay inside. There. 
Now that, that ball went a long way. He stayed inside it, okay? All right, just like we did with the one-hand drill, we're also going to look at it from behind. As, as a hitting coach, the two things I focus on, I focus on the player from this angle. I want to see this. And then I walk behind him to see what it looks like from behind. Is that barrel staying on line? So we're just going to do a couple of these, and let's see how it does. One more. Those are all real good swings. Now, believe it or not, when I bring in a player, I don't care if it's a high school, college, or pro player, we do what's called a ball exit speed test. And what we do is we put a ball, uh, a, a ball on a tee, and I stand probably 30, 40 feet away from them behind an L screen with a um, radar gun, and we pick up the ball speed that's coming off there, off of this full swing. And within just two or three days of learning how to use their hands properly, they actually hit the ball just as hard and a lot of times even harder with doing this drill than they were their entire body because now the bat's going through the correct way and, and coming through the zone, whipping through the zone and, and making solid contact. All right. Now what we do, every time we, we introduce a new drill, we went from one hand to two hand, we do what's called two and twos. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna marry that first drill into the second drill. So, so, and then at the end of the program, that's how we end up with a full swing. So what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do, we're gonna do two with one hand, all right? What happened there? Shoulder flew off. Right, exactly. His shoulder just flew off just a little bit. That's how we caught the ball just on the, off the end of the bat. Remember, shoulder, shoulder moves two inches, barrel just moved two inches. We went from sweet spot to end of the bat just because this moved up. That's why we do this. So, it, you know, along with this program, if you're out there and you're, you're struggling with something, you're flying open or whatever, you, you spend more time focusing on this drill. Okay, let's do one more with one hand. Quiet the body down. Very good. Now we're going to go two hands. One more. Okay, that time what happened? Came around it. Came around it. So I don't know if you can see that, but basically what happened was everything was good. He was online right to contact, and then he just forced it just a little bit. That's enough to take a 18 hit, hit 18 inch hitting zone and cut it down to about eight inches. So his opportunity just got cut in half as a hitter because he forced the barrel just a little bit. Okay, let's try another one. Very good. Now we're gonna go back to, to one hand. We'll do two of these and then go back to two hand. And you, you don't have to do a lot of these once you get accomplished. This is probably 20, 25 swings a day. All right, go again. Force it just a little bit, but not too bad. That was better. It's hard to tell those two, but I'm sure he can feel the, the, the difference between those two. Now, what you have to realize that, I know you probably see that on video, both balls were hit hard, they're both hitting the same thing, but one bat was forced through the zone just a little bit. So when a play, when, when I'm working with the player, I'm not focused so much what he does at contact. I'm focused just as much on what he does about nine inches before contact and nine inches after contact. Because this isn't where he's going to hit the ball at 95 miles an hour. He's going to hit the ball somewhere between here and here. So that's where that bat needs to be on line. Uh, now that we've really kind of accomplished the upper half, and this is what's really important for younger kids. Uh, normally age 11, 12 and under, what we like to do is focus just on hands for a while and then let them put that into their regular swing. I don't care what their lower half looks like right now. 
we need to let their hands get developed where it's comfortable facing live pitching. And one of the issues, what happens a lot is, is kids accomplish something off of a tee and they feel like they've done something or even in the cage, but when they get out in a game, in a game situation, they have that fear of failure and they re always revert back to what they were comfortable with. So what we need to do is slow it down for them. Then when you start working your lower half, the hands are natural. Now the player is only focusing on one thing at a time. And that's what's nice about doing this program. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna focus on the lower half. And what we're gonna do first is we're gonna do what's called weight shift. The very first thing a player does once, he, once that foot hits the ground is drive the knee to the ball. Okay, that's, that's where he's driving the knee. It, it goes knee, hip, then hands. So we hit from the ground up. Uh, if you watch a good major league hitter or a guy that actually has really good weight shift, the back foot will actually be up off the ground at contact. Now that's not because they pushed off, and this is something that's important uh, when we start working lower half. A lot of kids, their weight goes up over their front side. And the reason why that happens is because they're pushing off this foot, which is taking their weight out over their front side, instead of driving the knee and hip, which now keeps their weight back. So what we're gonna do is in this drill he's got to drive his knee just like you're kneeing some in front now think of this being a clock the hip has got to get to 12 o'clock before the hands come through if the hip doesn't get there first gets in this position the hands can't pull inside the ball and the barrel will now come out around the ball okay okay very good you see how he drives the knee then lets the hand comes through the ball. And if you notice, he continues to walk through. So at contact, we're continuing to go through the ball. We don't do this drill hit and then come back. It's drive through and on. Very good. And think about this when you're doing this drill, think about you're hitting it with your lower half. Forget about your hands. If you've worked your hands correctly, your hands are doing what it's supposed to do. Hit this ball with the knee. Drive the knee as hard as you can and let it happen. Very good. Let's do one more. Okay. What happened on that one? Okay. Come on over, explain. What happened was he looped through the zone. So if you notice, he come under the ball and up. That's why we popped the ball up. He didn't stay down through. So that was much better. Now, just like before, we're going to do the same drill, but we're going to be looking at it from behind. Again, what we're looking at from behind, does the hands stay on line with the pitch? Okay, let's try it. Very good. We're just going to do about four. Okay, not too bad. Came around it just a hair, that's why we hit the ball just off the end of the bat. Relax our hands. Very good, awesome, one more. I have a saying a lot of times, is just let it happen. Meaning drive it, and just let it go by itself. Let it happen, don't force it. Now Trey, I know he's a big kid, but there's not many, I don't know how many big leaguers can actually do this. He can actually hit a ball out of a ballpark with a wood bat off of a tee. Probably what, about 380? Yeah. About 380 feet off of a tee, okay? With a wood bat, all right? That's using the lower head, that's driving it, let the barrel do its job. Don't force the barrel, okay? All right, now what we're gonna do is what we call the pipe drill or it could be considered a rotation drill. Once we've accomplished weight shift, we're gonna now start working rotation. So in this drill, Trey, go ahead and get set up, okay? We use a, a, a four, you can use a three or four inch PVC pipe. You just cut it in half 
You use a two by four, you can use, some people use a barrel of a bat, but sometimes that wants to slide out from under you. And what we're gonna do is remember the other drill we, we were learning to drive the knee. Now in this drill, the knee is already driven. So now he's driven the knee, now we're gonna learn how to drive the hip, which now brings the hands to the ball. So, go get your stance. So, front foot's gonna be closed. Back foot and knee are pointed to the pitcher. Remember, in this drill, this is the, uh, we, we've driven the knee, uh, now we're driving the hip. So the next thing that we wanna do, just go, go get your stance. They do it in slow motion. He's gonna drive the hip to the ball, keep coming. The hip again has gotta clear 12 o'clock. If the hip doesn't clear 12 o'clock, if he's back here, go ahead and rotate back a little bit. If he's back here, his hands can't stay inside the ball. His hands can't stay inside the ball, now the barrel's gonna come out around it. So if he keeps rotating inside the ball, now he can, now the dops point to the pitcher, now he can drive in. Now what we do when, when you rotate, we'll get in this a little bit more when we get into our full swings. You rotate to the position you want to, to, to drive the ball. So if he's hitting the ball to the opposite field, the knee and hip goes to the opposite field, doesn't go all the way to the pitcher, okay? So again, on this hand, the lower half has to bring the, uh, bring the hands to the ball, okay? Let's try it. Okay, good. Let's do another one. And you notice he's staying down through the zone. He's not getting to the ball and lifting up out. He's staying through the zone, creating backspin to get the ball out of the ballpark. Good. We're just gonna do one more. Watch him drive the hip. Okay, he came around it just a little bit. If we'd slow that down, it may have been his lower half got there a little slow, which caused the, the barrel to get around the ball. You gotta, you gotta hit with your lower half. There we go, good job. Right. Now we're gonna do the same thing we've done with the other drills. We're gonna work this now from behind. Again, from behind, we're, we're mostly focused on bat path or hand path. Is the hand there and is he force, forcing the barrel or he's letting the barrel go through naturally. Now watch his finish on this. We don't want to be finishing high through, through the zone. Stay on line with the zone. Don't get here and lift up out of the zone. Stay through the zone. That way we're creating backspin and we're picking up off-speed pitches out front. If we get fooled, we can still make contact. All right? One more. All right, very good. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do, just like we did with our hand drills, we're gonna do two and twos, okay? We're gonna do two weight shift, two pipe. Now, this is extremely important. Never just work off the pipe over and over again, because what happens is, you, you end up just rotating, but you never learn to drive the lower half through the ball, and all you're gonna do is spin off the ball. A lot of people who talk about, quote, rotational hitting or something like that, when they're, when they're talking about rotating their body, which is wrong, but when they do something like that, all they're doing is spinning off the ball and hitting little lazy fly balls to right field instead of using the lower half to drive through it, okay? So one of the things we always do, we, we use this T, uh, we always use a tee with the rod. A lot of people ask why are we using that? And the purpose for this rod is if he stays inside this rod, now he's on line with the ball. If he goes, we, we, some people get confused and think you're supposed to go over that rod and down the ball. No, that's absolutely wrong. We just want to stay inside the rod, okay? So we always, we always start with the first drill he did first, which is weight shift. So we're gonna do two shift, two pipe, okay?
good. Now let's do two shift. Up, oh, came around a little bit. Give me one more. That time we stayed through. All right, pipe. Good, one more. Oh, good. But now what we're going to do is take the drills that we've learned and put it into a swing. So how we just did two and two, weight, uh, weight shift and pipe, now we're going to do two, two and two. Two weight shift, two pipe, two full swings. And you just alternate back and forth. So what we're trying to do is get the player to feel those drills and put it into his full swing. Okay? So we're going to start off with the weight shift. That was a good one. Good. Now go to pipe. Drive the hip through the ball. That one was right on. All right, now two full swings. Now, nothing has changed. Everything is exactly the same as what he just did off the pipe. The only difference was on the pipe he starts here, his full swing he starts here. Nothing's different. Now it's knee, hip, hands. Okay? Good. All right, good. Now back to weight shift. Good. All right, pipe. Oh. I came around a little bit. Just a little bit of force. Give me one more off the pipe. Hip, hands. Hip, then hands. Good. All right, now two good full swings. Good. Watch how it's lower half, knee, hip, hands. Very good. All right, next drill we want to work on is about like we were talking about on approach, is we want to work inside outside drill. So what we do is we use our drill pro tee this allows us to do multiple drills inside, outside. Another one we're going to do here in a few minutes. And what we want to do is we set, we set it up here. We always set the inside ball just a little bit lower. So that way he can hit the outside ball and then come back and hit the inside ball. So what we do is we'll do a couple, uh, we'll do a couple of these where he works outside, inside, outside, inside. And then we do a drill where as he loads, just as he starts to come, uh, to, to, to uh, attack the ball, I would say in or out, and he's got to be able to make that decision immediately and either hit the outside pitch or the inside pitch. And again, he needs to be focusing on the out and then react to the in. So let's just do a couple of these. All right. Go ahead and just hit a few. Hit, hit inside, then hit outside. Just hit a few, and then, then we'll do our inside-outside drills. Now, as he loads, just as he starts to come forward, I'll say in or out. 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 
Ow. And you can see, I wait until he's already on his way towards the ball before I tell him. Because that's in a game situation, that's when you've got to be able to react. In. Oh. Okay. Now that time we said in, he, and what happened was he was just a tad bit late being able to get his lower half there, which caused the barrel to come around the ball. In. That time he reacted a little bit quicker, got his lower half there, was able to clear his hands so his hands could stay inside the ball. Uh, one of the most important drills and something that I do with my players every single day, especially towards the end of our sessions, is our low ball drill. As you see, this tee can actually go all the way down, depending on the size of the player. Like a player like me, believe it or not, that right there is a strike. For Trey, it's a little bit taller. But we've got to learn how to come down and get this low ball with by using our lower half. Not by just taking our hands down and creating a big loop through the zone. We've got to learn how to drive our lower half down and through and get the bat on line with the pitch. So you've got to learn to use your lower half properly in order to hit the low pitch. Okay? There you go. And you can challenge yourself. Bring it down even a little bit lower each time. Work on get, staying down and through the ball. If you notice, his bat is staying basically on line with the pitch. He's not coming down and back up. He drives down and through and stays on line with the pitch that's coming in. Let's try one more. Very good. All right, now this is basically a spe what I would call a specialty drill. What I mean by that is, there are some drills that some players need to do and other players don't need to do. This is a drill that Trey doesn't need to do. Uh, and what, what it is, is called a high ball drill. But a lot of young players really need to work on this and do this. And what it's designed is the players who have a tendency to drop their hands. This is real important. You'll see this a lot with, with young players all the time. First, their first movement is here. Okay, so we go ahead, we have an adapter that goes with our T. You bring it all the way up to, to about shoulder height. Teach them to get the hands above the ball and still drive down through the ball, okay? Very good. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Tony Gwynn. I'm the head coach here at San Diego State uh, Hall of Famer. I used to play with the San Diego Padres for 20 years. And here's the thing I really like about the Camwood bat. It's really simple. Uh, most kids, most college guys, high school guys, pro, even pro guys, I think, we have the tendency to think that when we're hitting, we have to throw the barrel head at the baseball. And here, to me, is where the Camwood bat really kind of sets the table for you, and that is, in order to be a good hitter, you always have to lead with the now the bat. You always have to lead with the bottom hand, and you let the barrel follow. You let the barrel trail, and so the hardest ball to hit in baseball is a good fast ball away. And if you learn to take the knob of the bat to the baseball, and you get to that ball, fast ball away, I guarantee you, that the fastball in will be a whole lot easier to hit. And really it's about getting in a good position and taking the hands to the baseball correctly. And when I say taking them correctly, it's taking the knob of the bat to the baseball. If the ball's away, I want to take the knob to the baseball. If the ball's in the middle, I want to take the knob to the baseball. If the ball's inside, I want to take the knob of the bat to the baseball. And if I can keep my top hand palm up Throughout my swing, I'm going to be able to cover the ball late and the ball early. And that, that half, you notice I went from away 
to inside. That half is the half the novel of that is going to take to make contact. And everybody, especially younger guys, feel like the ball in is a lot harder to hit than the ball away. And really, it's the opposite. The ball away is a lot harder to hit than the ball in. And if you take your hands on the right path, that's going to allow you to hit both. And that's why this cam bat, to me, is really a nice thing to have because it will really help you understand the path that your hands have to take in order to make consistent contact.